Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a minute or so. I'll let people get into the room. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the School Arts Experience Grant webinar. My name is Jenny Knievel and I'm the Program Manager for Arts Learning Capacity Building and Humanities at the Iowa Arts Council. We also have Senior Grants Manager Veronica O'Hearn on the webinar today. Uh, before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Closed captioning is available for this presentation. You may enable it now by clicking on the closed captioning CC button at the bottom of your screen. All lines are muted and will be for the duration of the presentation to reduce background noise as this webinar is being recorded. A link to the recording of the webinar will be emailed to all registrants and posted on our website at iowaculture.gov arts. There you can also find the program information and resources mentioned in this webinar. If you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A feature in Zoom. You may also use this feature if you are experiencing any technical difficulties. Staff will assist with Q&A throughout the presentation. However, we'll also take time to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. So let's take a look at the agenda for today's webinar. The purpose of this presentation is to familiarize you with the Iowa Arts Council and our role in administrating the grants that are supported by state and federal government. We'll provide an overview of the grant program goals and eligibility, walk through application requirements, and how to successfully submit a proposal using our online system. Now let's begin with an overview of the Iowa Arts Council. The Iowa Arts Council is your state arts agency, meaning we're an entity within state government. We are a division of the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs. The mission of the department is to empower Iowa to build and sustain culturally vibrant communities by connecting Iowans to the people, places, and points of pride that define our state. The department is made up of three divisions, the State Historical Society of Iowa, the Iowa Arts Council, and Produce Iowa State Office of Media Production. The Iowa Arts Council is the arts arm of the department, and our mission is to cultivate creativity, participation, and learning in the arts. We administer funding, networking, and learning opportunities that support arts and culture across Iowa. Funding for our work and for this program comes from the federal government through the National Endowment for the Arts and from the state government through, the, through annual appropriations from the Iowa Legislature to the Iowa Arts Council. The takeaway here is that the Iowa Arts Council work, including the School Arts Experience Grant, is funded with taxpayer dollars, so the public value of what we do is an essential component of our programs, especially our grant programs. So today we're going to discuss the School Arts Experience Grant Program, but we also want you to be aware of the other grant opportunities that are available to support arts and culture activity across Iowa. This slide shows the grant programs by eligible applicant type artists, nonprofits, schools, and communities. Please note that applicants may only receive one grant per year from these programs, so you need to pick which program is the best fit for you. These grants fund activities taking place within the upcoming fiscal year, which is July 1st, 2022, until June 30, 2023. The Artist Catalyst Grant, Creative Places Project Grant, and the School Arts Experience Grant will have quarterly deadlines in May, August, November, and February, while all the others have one annual deadline on May 2nd. So a little bit more about each of the grant programs. The Artist Catalyst Grant provides grants ranging from $500 to $2,500 and have a 50% cash, cash match requirement. These grants fund Iowa artists to undertake activities or small projects related to a particular goal that advances their business skills, enhances their artistic craft, or expands their audience or market. They do not fund regular ongoing or operating expenses, but rather a unique activity that will advance an artistic practice or career. Art project grants provide grants from $2,500 to $10,000 with a 50% cash match requirement for larger projects that create and present new work, involve collaboration, and have public access. Creative Places project grants provide communities and nonprofits $500 to $2,500 with a one-to-one -one cash match, 50% of that being cash, for arts and culture projects that engage Iowa artists to advance creative placemaking as part of a community workforce or tourism strategy. The cultural capacity building grants provide $5,000 annually for two years to support cultural nonprofits that have annual operating expenses between $10,000 to $150,000. 
Greenlight grants provide grants from $10,000 to $50,000 with a 50% cash match requirement for Iowa filmmakers for film and media production projects taking place in Iowa. All grant funds must be spent on Iowa vendors. The Artist Fellowship provides $10,000 and year-long professional development program to help advance the artistic careers of Iowa artists. And finally, the School Arts Experience Grants, which we'll go over in detail during this presentation, provide $500 to $2,500 with a 50% cash match requirement for teaching artists, schools, or nonprofits to present fine arts activities, performances, and educational content to Iowa K-12 students. This past few years have brought to the forefront historic inequities in arts funding faced by many individuals, organizations, and communities. Therefore, the Iowa Arts Council will focus on enhancing equity and inclusion across all of its programs, and will place additional consideration on applications from individuals, schools, and cultural organizations that represent populations that have been historically under-resourced by arts and cultural funding due to rural geography, race and ethnicity, and socioeconomic status. The definitions and criteria for meeting these priorities can be found in our grant terms and definitions on our website. Applications from all eligible applicants are required or are encouraged rather than regardless of whether or not you meet this funding criteria. Let's take a look at the application timeline for the School Arts Experience Grant. This will give you an idea of what to expect in terms of turnaround and communication for the program after you've submitted an application. Please note that all reference communication is sent via email, so it's important to provide current contact information in all your materials. Applications to the School Arts Experience Grant will be accepted on a quarterly basis, with deadlines at 11.59 p.m. on May 2nd, August 1st, November 1st, and February 1st. Once the application is submitted, they'll undergo review by staff for eligibility. Eligible applications will then be sent to a competitive panel review by Department of Cultural Affairs staff. This panel will submit funding recommendations to the Director of the Department of Cultural Affairs and the Administrator of the Iowa Arts Council. They will consider panel recommendations and department funding priorities to make decisions. All applicants will be notified whether or not their application was funded within four weeks of the application deadline. Funding decisions are final and may not be appealed due to dissatisfaction. Those who receive funding will receive a contract and more information on how to manage their award at that time. The period of time in which grant funds can be spent and the grant activity can take place is determined by when the application was submitted. For applications submitted by May 2nd, grant funds can be spent between July 1st, 2022 until June 30, 2023. For applications submitted by August 2nd, Grant funds can be spent between September 1st, 2022 to June 30, 2023. For applications submitted by November 1st, grant funds can be spent between December 1st, 2022 until June 30, 2023. And for applications submitted by February 1st, grant funds can be spent between March 1st, 2023 until June 30, 2023. So essentially, depending on when you've submitted your application will determine how much time you have to spend the funds because all grant funds will need to be spent by June 30. So now how to apply. As with any grant program, it's important to determine whether the program is the right fit for you. To do so, make sure you've reviewed all available material before applying. Please note that the Iowa Arts Council's grant process is entirely paperless. All grant program materials are available online and all communications will be sent via email. Our accessibility coordinator, Lindsay Keast, is available to support anyone who needs extra assistance with the application process. Her contact information can be found in the grant guidelines. So first, we encourage you to go to the Iowa Arts, Arts Council website, iowaculture.gov arts, and then click on the Grants tab. Here you'll find a list of the Iowa Arts Council administered grant programs. Then click on the link for the specific grant program that you wish to apply for. Each Iowa Arts Council administered grant program has a different set of requirements and guidelines that applicants must follow. So please make sure that you closely read and understand these. The guidelines also include a scoring rubric so you can see how an application is evaluated. You'll also need to read the Iowa Arts Council's funding policies, which cover the rules and requirements for all of our grant programs. Then visit the Iowa Arts Council's application portal at iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com. Here you'll be able to view a summary of the application requirements by clicking on the link to the program that you wish to apply for. 
To view the full application requirements, you must create an account in SlideRoom and log in. After logging in, you will have access to the narrative questions, character limits, and the upload requirements. All material must be submitted online via SlideRoom. The Iowa Arts Council does not accept any material submitted by mail or email, nor does it accept late material after a deadline is passed. Once you've reviewed all available material, contact the Iowa Arts Council staff or attend one of our virtual office hours to ask any remaining questions. Office hours are open Zoom meetings where applicants can drop in and ask questions about applying for a grant. The schedule for these meetings is available on our website and we will share it at the conclusion of today's presentation. So now let's take a look at the goals and general eligibility requirements for the School Arts Experience Grant. The School Arts Experience Grant Program supports the presentation of innovative fine arts activities, performances, and educational content that expand learning opportunities for Iowa K-12 students in and outside of the classroom. The program provides support to schools, professional teaching artists, and nonprofit organizations to strengthen the role of the arts in student learning and achievement. Projects can either occur in a traditional classroom setting or outside the classroom. So now some types of eligible projects. These could include the creation and presentation of new or expanded fine arts learning content or resources that, is in, that are intended for K-12 students, collaborations between arts organizations and schools around increasing access to special artistic presentations, exhibitions, or performances, hiring teaching artists to share their expertise through creative and educational demonstrations, performances, or guided arts activities. Please note that the School Arts Experience grants are intended to support exceptional needs and opportunities rather than ongoing or operational costs related to a school's fine arts education program. There are some ineligible projects. These include the following types of activities. You can't purchase Artwork, including public art with these grant funds, capital projects, collection maintenance or rest restoration, construction, fundraisers, lobbying activities, any non-arts learning projects, any ongoing projects or programming which identified beginning and end dates are arbitrary, projects submitted by an individual that is initiate, initiated, managed by, or that benefits an entity or organization with which the individual applicant has a formal affiliation, such as employment or volunteer service, projects that result in an applicant's course credit, degree, or certification, projects that occur prior to or after the funding period, projects that involve religious activities, and any projects that have already received an Iowa, Arts, Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs grant for any part or phase of that project. So again, on the funding period, the Iowa Arts Council's program function on the state fiscal year, which is July 1 to June 30. Applications for the School Arts Experience Grant are accepted on a quarterly basis. So as we mentioned before, applications submitted by May 2nd will have activities that can happen between July 1st to June 30. Applications submitted by August 1st, I may have said August 2nd earlier, but it is August 1st for that next deadline. Those project activities can occur between September 1st to June 30. Applications submitted by November 1st, the activities can happen between December 1st to June 30. And then finally, applications submitted by February 1st, activities can happen between March 1st to June 30. Eligible grant requests include, and they can range between $500 to $2,500 to support one-time expenses that are essential to the completion of the proposed project. The request must be dedicated to eligible one-time direct project expenses that are legitimate parts of the proposed project and must be incurred and expended within the eligible funding period. Expenses identified in the grant request should be based on competitive current market pricing. So these requests can include direct project costs such as artist fees, materials or equipment that cost under $5,000 per unit, However, if you do include material or equipment purchases in your grant request, it must be part of a larger project and necessary for learning to occur. Requests that include only equipment or materials will not be considered. You can also include marketing costs or field trip costs. Again, the field trip cost has to be submitted when the trip is directly connected to in-classroom learning. Requests that only include field trip expenses will not be considered. Um, personnel time dedicated to the project. This could be planning, curriculum development, evaluation time, but you'll need to demonstrate how that personnel time is specifically dedicated to the proposed project and benefits are not eligible. 
As I mentioned, the School Arts Experience Grant does have match requirements for the budget. Applicants are required to demonstrate investment in the project by providing cash matching funds in an amount that is one half the total grant amount requested from the Iowa Arts Council. So for example, if an applicant requests $1,000 in grant funds, you must have at least $500 in cash match for a minimum project budget of $1,500. All required cash match must be a legitimate part of the proposed project and dedicated to the one-time project expenses. The cash does not need to be secured at the time of application, but it does need to be secured by the end of the funding period. You will be expected to demonstrate where you anticipate the cash match to come from in the grant application and whether or not it is in hand. Funding from the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, State of Iowa, or federal government may not be used to meet the cash match requirement. And then there are some ineligible budget expenses that you cannot include in your budget. So these can be such things as acquisition or purchase of artwork, activity that result in an applicant's course credit degree, any budget shortfalls, capital expenditures that include equipment or materials that cost over $5,000 per unit, collection maintenance or restoration expenses, donations to other organizations, deficit or debt reduction, expenses incurred prior to or after the funding period, foreign travel, food, beverage, and alcohol, fundraising, home studio office expenses, lobbying activity, ongoing operating expenses like utilities, rent, office supplies, personal benefits, prizes and awards, property maintenance, restoration or renovation, and then finally any unallowable expenses for federal awards that are identified in the 2 CFR 200 Part E cost principles, which there's a link to those in the guidelines. Eligible applicants to this program include schools, and so this could be either public or private nonprofit 501c3 schools or school districts that serve K-12, K through 12 students and are physically located in Iowa. School districts and school foundations are eligible to apply for the same project on behalf of multiple schools within their district. So for example, if the proposed project could serve all fourth graders within a district. Nonprofits are also eligible. They'll need to be federally tax exempt 501c3 nonprofit organizations that are incorporated and physically located in Iowa. Any entities that are located in a border community may be eligible, and entities using a fiscal agent are eligible to apply. And then finally, teaching artists can apply. These need to be professional individual teaching artists that could include visual or performing arts, filmmakers, musicians, or creative writers. They need to be current full-time Iowa residents with a permanent address in Iowa. They need to be 18 years of age or older. And the application must support a project that is initiated by the individual teaching artist, not an entity or organization. Individuals who seek funding on behalf of programs or entities that are not yet formally organized as a nonprofit must apply as an organization and adhere to fiscal agent policy. And then finally, applicants who represent an artist collective, artist team, or a band must apply as an individual on behalf of the group and clearly state their individual role in the project proposal as the individual who will be legally obligated in terms of the grant agreement. So then the ineligible applicants include agencies, departments, or divisions of county, state, or federal government, for-profit entities, nonprofit or public institutions of higher ed, individuals enrolled in any type of undergraduate or graduate degree granting program at the time of application, Iowa Arts Council administered grantees who have already received a grant from the department for the current application funding period. So this means cultural leadership partners in Iowa Great Places with active grant contracts are not eligible to apply. However, strengthening communities grant recipients and humanities project grant recipients with active grant contracts are eligible to apply to this program. And then finally, Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs grantees with an outstanding final report or who have been placed in a funding moratorium are not eligible to apply. All right, that covers the eligibility and goals for the program. Now let's take a look at the content of the application. We'll walk through the online application portal after this section. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that the scoring criteria included in the guidelines for the program is what the panel will use to review your application. You'll notice that the criteria directly corresponds with each section of the application. There are a handful of application sections that are not scored but are required for the application to be considered complete. The primary contact information will ask for contact information for the individual who's submitting the application and who we should contact with any questions. So please make sure this information is correct. 
Then there's the authorized official contact information, which will act, ask for contact information for the person who has authority to legally obligate the grant applicant. This individual will receive the contract via email should grant funding be awarded. So again, make sure their contact information is correctly inputted into slide room. The applicant information is going to ask for contact information for the entity applying. So this is an organization, if it's an organization or school applying. If it's an individual, that will be the individual's information again. Please note all applicants who are not individuals, this would include nonprofits, schools, and governments, are required to provide a unique entity identifier or UEI in the applicant information. The UEI is a 12-digit alphanumeric character assigned by the federal government at SAM.gov, and it is required in order to receive funding through this program. For those familiar with DUNS, this UEI replaces that DUNS number this year as the federal identifier. If you need to attain a number, please visit SAM.gov for more information. The project information section will ask for the start and end date of your project and the project title. The start and end date should fall within the eligible funding period. This section will also ask whether or not the project involves placing artwork on a historic property. If it does, we'll have to ask the project to be approved by our sister division, the State Historical Society of Iowa. And finally, this section will ask for a proposal summary. While this isn't scored, this will be your first experience the panel has with your application. So please make sure the information is clear and well-written. It should state in one to three sentences what the project is and what the grant funds are gonna be used for. In an effort to ensure the Iowa Arts Council's programs and services are representative of the diversity of Iowa's arts community, we've begun to collect demographic information for all of our applicants. This allows us to understand who we are reaching so that we have a better idea of who we are not. This section is optional and it is confidential. It will not be reviewed by the panel. However, it will help us understand whether we're meeting the goal to serve all of Iowa's cultural community, so we encourage you to complete it. Then there's the minority impact statement, which is required form by the state of Iowa. It asks what, if any, impact the project will have on minority communities. This is not reviewed by the panel. And finally, there's an assurances section, which confirms that you've read the program guidelines and to the best of your knowledge, have submitted accurate information and a truthful representation of your project in the application. All right, so let's move on to the scored sections. The first scored section will be the applicant profile. And as you'll notice, the root scoring rubric will align with each of these questions. So if you're a school or nonprofit, the applicant profile will ask for your mission statement and to describe how you fulfill that mission and serve your target population by providing a description of the types of programs you offer. You'll want to tell the panel what programs your organization regularly offers and what target population you serve. Be specific and include demographics for your regular audience. We also ask that you identify notable achievements to demonstrate organizational progress. The panel will be scoring this section based on whether or not applicant demonstrates exceptional programming or services that advance the mission and serve your target population. Applicants should also demonstrate a strong record of progress through relevant notable achievements. So if you're an individual artist, the applicant profile will ask for your artist's vision statement. Here we want you to enter or enter your overall vision for your work as an artist. This is not a statement for a specific body of work, but rather your work as a whole. Why do you make artwork? Then we ask you how, how you fulfill that previously stated vision through your practice. Tell us what type of work you make and what it is about. The panel should have a sense of the themes and forms of your work after reading this section. Then we'll ask you to tell us about notable achievements in your career. These are self-defined, so they could include notable venues where you've presented your work, honors you've received, or skills you may have mastered. The panel will want to see a record of progress in terms of your work and your career. The panel will score this section based on whether or not you've demonstrated an active artistic practice. The applicant should also demonstrate a strong record of progress in their artistic practice through notable achievements. The next section is a project description. This is the what and why section of the narrative. We'll ask you to describe what the proposed arts learning project is and identify specific learning goals for your project and include the Iowa Fine Arts Standards the project will help learners to achieve. Include information about the grade level of the learners the project will be targeting and the timeline for the project activities. The panel will be scoring this section based on the quality of the arts learning goals. The project description should be clear. 
The fine arts standards being achieved should also be clearly defined. The panel needs to be confident that the project will be successfully realized through a clear, detailed timeline of tasks. The next section is the educator profile. In this section, we'll ask you to describe the qualifications of the arts educator, educators, and or teaching artists involved in the project and their experience creating lesson plans or arts learning content. The panel will score the section based on whether or not the educators involved with the project have significant experience developing effective arts learning content. Then we get into the budget. The budget will include two tables or charts where you'll break down project expenses and demonstrate that you've met the 50% cash match requirement. Please ensure your math is correct and that you're not including ineligible items in the budget forms. This can lead to eligibility issues for your application. In all sections of the budget, we ask that you round to the nearest dollar and do not include any dollar signs, decimals, or commas. You'll get an error if you do so. The grant request expenses is where you'll itemize the eligible expenses that will be funded by the grant request and, and include a description and a dollar amount for each expense. You can summarize like expenses but need to provide sufficient details so the panel can determine whether or not the expenses are accurate and appropriate. We ask that you add a final total row at the bottom total row at the bottom of the table that identifies the total grant request. So this amount should be between $500 to $2,500. Then the match expenses is where you'll detail where the required 50% cash match will come from and whether or not you have any in-kind contributions outside of the grant request dedicated to the project. You will include a brief description of the expenses, the total cash amount or in-kind value of the expense, the funding source or where the cash donation will come from and whether the funding source has been secured for the expense. Again, we ask that you add a final total row at the bottom that identifies the total cash expenses and total value of in-kind contributions. You will also be asked to provide an estimated total project cost, which should be equal to the sum of the grant request, cash match expenses, and in-kind contributions that you listed above. The panel will look to see that the budget is clear, appropriate, and leverages multiple sources of match to demonstrate investment in the project. And finally, we're gonna ask you to submit some work samples. You'll need to submit three to five samples that directly relate to the proposed arts learning project. Samples could dem should demonstrate the quality of the arts learning experience and the proposed project. Panelists will not be required to view more than one page of a document or more than three minutes of an audio or video file. So you are encouraged to edit your files to that length or direct panelists to a specific section within a work sample if you're unable to edit it. The panel will score the section based on the quality of the sample and whether or not they clearly demonstrate strong capabilities in artistic concept and form. Then the last piece of scoring is the case for support. This is where the panel will evaluate the quality of the, the overall quality of the application and whether or not you've made a strong case for support for your organization. Now that covers the content of the application, let's take a look at how to complete the application online in slide room. So as I mentioned earlier, you will have to submit your application materials via slide room. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what it's gonna look like. So when you go to our website, this is the landing page for the School Arts Experience Grant that you've probably seen since you've joined us for this webinar. And here you'll see links at the bottom under how to apply to read the guidelines, register for this webinar, which you've already had. This will be replaced with the link to view the recording of the webinar, and then a link to submit applications. Also down here, you'll notice the virtual office hours and how to join and when the office hours are occurring. And then finally, there's some example applications that you can click a link to to access if you want to see what some past applications look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link to submit the application. And this link will take you to iowaartscouncil.slideroom.com, which is our landing page for SlideRoom. At the top, you'll see if you already have a SlideRoom account, it may pre-populate the login, or there's a place to sign up if you don't already have an account. So when you get onto this page, you're gonna scroll down to grants, and then you'll scroll down to, to find the FY 2023 School Arts Experience Grant. And you'll wanna click on that, and then this is the landing page for this grant program. You'll see that this is our May 2nd deadline. Once the May 2nd deadline has passed, we'll update this form for the next deadline, which would be August 1st. 
Here you can see a, a link to click on to read the guidelines, a link to our funding policies, and then that link to the two CFR part 200, if you'd like to look at that. And then there's a link to apply now, or if you wanna just preview the application, you can click on this link. And then this just gives you an overview of the questions that will be asked that we already had went over in the presentation, but you can kind of scroll down and see. So this is a high level overview. So when you're ready to apply, you'd click on apply now. If you already have an account, you can just log in. And now you're able to begin the application. So again, this goes through the forms that we talked about. And on the left hand side, you can click through each form. And then when you get into the narrative sections, if you start writing into the box, you'll see at the bottom here that the number of characters start to decrease as you write. And remember, these are characters, not word counts. So we encourage folks to write out your narrative in another um, document application like Google Docs or Word, and then copy and paste it into the application. However, make sure that you've copied and pasted all of what you've written because occasionally things will get cut off. I also want to note that some web browsers have issues viewing slide rounds, specifically Internet Explorer. So right now I'm looking at this through Google Chrome. So if you have any issues, you may want to try looking at it through another browser. So then the next section is the budget. And you can see here, this is where the tables are to write your expense description and the grant request amount. And then the, the expense, the match expenses, and then your total project costs. And then here's that demographic information section and the minority impact statement and assurances. Your work samples will be uploaded under the portfolio section. So you'll just click on add media and then it'll prompt you to upload your work samples. And then finally, you'll get to the submit section. So now you'll see I've got these red explanation points. This means that I haven't completed each of these sections. So I would need to go back in, complete the section before I'll get the green light to then submit the application. So make sure at the end you submit your application once you've entered everything. You are also able to work on my application, save and exit at any time. And then there's also a help if you're having any issues with the slide room um, portal you'll need to go to Slide Room to ask for help from their support. So that is our overview of Slide Room. I'm gonna go ahead and let Veronica bring back up our slides. And then um, we, as I mentioned, have office hours. So these are just opportunities for you to just virtually drop in during the hours. They all will start at 11, but you don't have to come in right at 11. We'll sit in the room until noon. And it's just a chance for you to stop in and ask questions and come and go as you need to. And then there was that link to example applications. There's make sure you look over the grant terms and definitions and then reach out to program staff if you have any questions. We are also able to take a look at applications. If it's an advance of the deadline, if you want us to read a draft before you submit it, you're welcome to do that as well. So that, that concludes our presentation. Um, Veronica will bring up my contact information at the end of the screen. And then we will hang out if you have any questions. Otherwise, you're welcome to sign off. And again, we'll send you a link to this recording. And if you have questions, you can type them into the Q&A. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. Oh, wait. Um, so there is a question about explaining more about the DUNS transition. So the uh, National Endowment for the Arts has decided that they are going to now use this UEI. So if you already had a SAM.gov account, you're automatically assigned a UEI number. Um, if you didn't, then you'll have to log into SAM.gov and and request the UEI number. So it's just a number that um, identifies where your organization is located.
So they're no longer going to be using the dense numbers at all. All right. We'll just hang out for a couple more minutes. But again, if, if you don't have any questions, you're welcome to sign off. And please reach out if you have any other questions at a later date.